Hello, hello friends and welcome to a new video. So today we're going to be doing, well, really reading two books that I've wanted to get to for such an incredible amount of time now and for some reason I have not prioritized it. Like I own copies of them, I've had them checked out at the library like on multiple times and I just like have not made this priority to like sit down and actually read them. But these are two iconic fantasy series and two that so many people I know have basically described these as the best of the best. So we're going to be reading the first first book in both of these and it they are Jade City and The Poppy War. So both of these are they're kind of different where Jade City is more a bit of urban fantasy call it kind of like I feel like more mafia-esque and The Poppy War is very military-esque and takes place I believe in ancient like I'm not sure if this one is more historical I think it is historical but either way both of these have been described as two of the like best fantasy series in like the last few years and I truly Truly, truly cannot wait to get to them so we're gonna do a video we're gonna make myself read them like actually give me give me an excuse and a reason that I have to read these books and finally like set aside the time so that I'm gonna do it so welcome to the video if you guys are excited as I am please subscribe please like this video let me know if you've read these before and let's get into it So just an FYI, the Poppy War is on Kindle Unlimited. So I've kind of been doing, well, I started started reading it on there because sometimes it's easier for me a lot of the time when I'm on the go to just have my ebook going, have it on Kindle Unlimited, just instead of carrying around a physical book, sometimes it's so much easier. But let me tell you, let me tell you, the first chapter of this book was so intensely good, which is, that's how far I am in right now. But this was so intensely good that I've immediately decided I need to read it physically. I need to start like annotating it and tabbing things because I have a feeling this is going to be a masterpiece. And there is such a big part of me that is like not surprised at all because I've read two other books by RF Guang. I've read Yellowface and Babel and both of them were five stars. Both of them were like the literary dark academia smart person novels of my dreams. And this is very much the same because we are following a peasant girl in this world who starts taking these like empire-wide tests. And she studies so intensely because she is determined to break of her herself a better life. Also sorry if you can hear my cat. It's food time and he is making himself known. But she is a peasant girl and she has no like real formal education but she decides that she's going to study so intensely and like really just like throw herself into this education so that she can win a spot at this coveted university. And she does. She does. She manages to study so intensely that she places first in like her entire province. So she's sent there but she is like also this like very backwater country girl who has she's an orphan she has no family she like really doesn't have anything she has no money like everybody from the town is embarrassed by the fact that she placed it because they feel like there's no way that she actually could have achieved these results but at the same time also like they don't want to acknowledge that she outshone like all of these noblemen all of these like people who've had crazy educations for years and she still managed to do better than them but yeah that is the first chapter i enjoyed this so immensely that yeah i need to i need to like immediately start having this because the information the quotes the knowledge insane and i just want to like every line i want to underline i want to like have quotes ready to go i want to like tab all the knowledge all the world building all the history everything so i <laughs> this is going to be a good book <laughs> So I'm down to the last like 130-ish pages of The Poppy War and I'm honestly just popping in to say that this is like really, really <laughs> intensely good and I was kind of like planning on updating it earlier today but then I just like got sucked into reading and didn't want to stop and like just had to keep going like right now literally just because like I had a phone call from my partner that's the only reason I stopped reading and like that I didn't want to just keep binging this but I'm definitely gonna finish it tonight because I am addicted. I genuinely like I don't know what I was thinking that this would be but it's better. It is better than like anything that I was really expecting. It is like once again RF Kuang just proving that she is a master and then when you think of the fact that this is her first book she wrote. I think she wrote this while she was in university. Like this woman's mind is brilliant. Her expertise of the writing craft like it honestly like I can't wait to see how much this series progresses and like you know I can't even really tell that it's her first book. Like it feels I mean in some ways say if we were to compare 
compare this to Babel, I can definitely see like improvements in her writing and her delivery of like her delivery of information and the world building that she has. Like I could definitely see an improvement in Babel compared to this world, but it's like this is still so masterfully done. Like I truly, truly think that I'm going to come out of this as like the biggest RF Wong like stan of life, especially once I'm done this series. And I have a feeling that she's going to become someone who like is just like automatic by automatic read no matter what she puts out. Because yeah, like Yellowface was her first foray away from the fantasy type of realm, away from this historical and something into more modern day, modern day kind of thriller, contemporary commentary on society and brilliant. It was one of my favorite reads of last year. So like just everything she does is just so, so good. And this is absolutely no difference, no like difference from that. So I'd say the first like 40-ish percent of this book took place primarily at this military school where we're following Rin as she is there and learning the ways of war. This military school is specifically catered towards like the best of the best of society, the absolute top ranking people who've like taken these imperial exams and as well as like the children of commanders, the children of generals, the high-ranking people in the world. And she is just a like backwater farmer. She's an orphan and she really just got in here kind of like through sheer determination and her just own complete insane willpower to like just study and put her everything into it. And then while she's at the school too, she's facing like all these adversaries, all of this thing. Like everybody really believes against, not believes against her, but nobody really has faith in her and think that she's just kind of there as like a charity case as kind of there like we can mark off on our census that we let in one commoner so she like goes above and beyond to like the most insane level ever to succeed in this university really like makes such a distinguished name for herself and really puts herself on the map makes her own kind of legend within the school and now she's out of school it's been like we've already followed three years in this and she is at war and this is definitely like the book kind of I don't know if I'd say it like slumped a bit for me but it just kind of hit like a different like stalling a little bit just because it was a very different change of atmosphere. We're following a different range of characters and it was just very different from the first part of it. So that just like slumped a tiny tiny bit just because it was like something that I was just getting used to but I am fully immersed in this. I am loving it. There's all of these hints of like the magic, the gods, all of these things coming back and just Rin like really really like finding her power and finding all of this like incredible stuff about herself love it love it so good and yeah i'm absolutely gonna be finishing this i have 130 ish pages i can't wait i think i finished the last like 200 pages in the last like hour and a half so i'm gonna keep going i am so ridiculously into this right now We are done so well book one at least which is puppy war we're done and when i last checked in i don't think i had that many pages left i think it was like under 50 and whew, whew, things happened i read one of the most horrific scenes i have ever read about what happens to the female prisoners by in this war and i read that scene and then i had to sit for like a few days before i could continue on in the series because it just like it was so graphic and it really really went there and then the ending of this book was absolutely bonkers like it went off the rails Rin our main character is I guess I kind of miss this but she is the most like unhinged unlikable character like her decisions are terrible but I'm like fully supporting her because she's my girl and I just absolutely obsessed so good could not have predicted how this would be going like what would happen how good this was and just how insanely interesting this ended up being so yeah I'm giving this five stars. I'm gonna be picking up the next one I'm sure next month. Like I truly cannot wait to read it. I think I just need to like buy a copy and you can see like I basically stopped tabbing about halfway through entirely because I was so into the book and like I never wanted to stop reading. Like not that things of note weren't happening. It was that I was so 100% invested that I didn't want to like take those extra 10 seconds to pull out a tab and just like think about what to do <laughs> but yeah loved it. Five stars. Potentially one of my best of the year already so good job Arf Kwong. like once again you've done it and I am now started 
Jade City. So I'm just under 100 pages in. It's, I think this is a longer book. No, no, it's actually the same length. It's just a chunkier, chunkier pages. Um, so in this one, we're in this island that has Jade. It, people can wear it. It gives them certain powers and it's basically controlled by this crime family. So they're the ones who have access to the Jade. There's like a war with another family going on and like they're always vying for power. I'm definitely intrigued by it, but I would say I'm like just the initial few pages, not even few, the initial 100 pages I've read. I'm not as invested in it off the bat as I was the Poppy War. Like the Poppy War I was 100% in from page one and this one I'm just, I feel like around page 70 I kind of started to get a bit into it. Like we're introduced to so many characters off the bat, we're introduced to so many different ideas, like a bit about the families, a bit about the different positions within it, a bit about what Jade does, and even like these training schools for kids on how to like learn to use Jade so they can become part of the family, like all this stuff. And it was just a lot of information to kind of start with. So I think now I'm getting more into it. We've kind of like identified a few characters who I think are going to be the main ones. There's a daughter returning home, there's a student, and then there's another man. Actually, I don't even, I don't even know if they're all in the same family, but I'm still really, really into it. So, okay, okay. Reading the back, which maybe I should have. So there's four siblings of one family who are preparing for battle and there's a fragile peace between their clans that's about to break. So anyways, I'm intrigued, just not fully invested yet, not 100% sure yet how much I'm gonna like it. Really hoping I like it a lot though. So just based off everything I've heard. So I've gotten about 50% of the way into Jade City. Like I think I'm at like 51 or 52. I am enjoying it, but I don't know. Like I'm not 100% invested in it yet. Like there's still something that's kind of like just keeping me a little like on edge, not on edge, but just like a little bit out of the story. And I think part of it is just we're following a lot of characters and it's kind of just a lot to wrap my head around. Just like keeping track of who everyone is, what their relationship is to each other, what their position in this clan is. And I'm just kind of like I think mixing all of that together so it's like not quite 100% like actually settling in my mind the way that it should be and I think that is kind of my main issue. We're also very much so we're following one of the clans in this world who have Jade and I think there's a few rival clans or like two main ones but we're following one of the clans and several members of it and so far it's really like just ramping up towards a potential war with one of the other clans. That's kind of been like the entire st story so far is just like setting up the pieces for a potential war to be coming. So that in itself is not the most exciting part. Like I think I'm hoping, I'm hoping that things are start about to get kind of wild. Things are going to like really start ramping up. Things are going to get a lot more interesting. But right now it's just very, very much like setting the pieces, setting all the main characters, just kind of like dropping you into the start of tensions coming up. So that's like, you know, it's not the most exciting, exciting things to read about. So I am hoping that like the action is going to start ramping up like crazy and things are going to get a lot more interesting. Also, I painted my nails to match the cover of the book because I'm hoping to finish it within like the next day or two, so I think this would be very fun. So yeah, this has been, yeah, I'm definitely hoping to finish reading this like very soon. I'm gonna really try today and try and focus as much as possible, maybe finish it today, maybe tomorrow, but I, yeah, I'm enjoying it. It's just not like instantly hooked, you know? So I got to probably about like 70, 60, 70% 70 into Jade City. We're gonna estimate it's kind of about that. And and I'm actually really liking it. I feel like my opinion on this has like not drastically changed but it's definitely turned around and it's kind of going from something that I was like only sort of enjoying to something that I am very invested in now. So we are following the members of this crime clan and primarily the like siblings in this one generation of it. So their um their father was previously the ruler, the pillar of this clan is what it's called and he had three children who are now all kind of the next generation, the next generation of leadership. There's one Lan who is the current pillar, Hilo who is the, I forget the word, but he is basically the general of the armies. Like not really the armies necessarily, but all of their like people on the ground. And then Shay who had left the clan for a while, left the island that this takes place on and went to the mainland to kind of live a life away from this clan and everything for a few years. And now she is back and she's still trying to kind of stay away from the politics and stay out of this 
like family business but she keeps getting drawn back in and it's like proving to be much harder than she anticipated to kind of like stay away from it all and we're also following one of their cousins who is currently in the academy to learn how to be one of these jade wielders and this this is an academy that all potential like members of the clan go into everybody who is intended to be affiliated with the no peak clan and one day wear jade and it's like them learning how to wield jade but also how to kind of be a member of the society. So things have very much happened. Things have picked up considerably. And the thing that really like, I finally, the thing that really changed it for me is that I finally got a grasp on who all the characters were, which that was one of my main issues is that I was really having trouble differentiating everyone. And they're all kind of melding into the same person. And I was really having trouble like finding, you know, figuring out their position within the clan. So they never really explain what these positions themselves mean. You just kind of have to figure it out by inference. So the pillar is the leader. There's the weatherman who is basically what I think of as kind of the strategist slash the person who does all of the administrative and money kind of work, like the person who's behind the scenes running everything. And then there's also, I forget the name, but the person who does the, the like heads all of the fingers who are like the um, people on the ground. So after I got a sense of that, it did definitely take a change for me. Like it definitely became much more intriguing and interesting because I actually understood what was happening. And yeah, I'm really enjoying it now. I'm really invested. Things have been happening things have been starting to hit the fan and it's definitely changed the book for the better for me like it's made me get really invested I'm starting to really care about the characters and I'm really really starting to anxiously like want to see where the story is going so definitely one that has gotten better as I've gone along with it and very happy to say that I am like fully invested now Back. But guess what my friends, I'm done Jade City and yeah, I just finished it off and I liked it a lot. I definitely don't, yeah, it wasn't a five star for me, but I do have this feeling that other books in the series could get there. So it just like wasn't 100% there as being like a new all time favorite and new something that I'm obsessed with, something that like is life changing, if you know what I mean? Like it just didn't have all of the markers that I usually go for five star, which even like I give five stars liberally. <laughs> I'm really not that picky when it comes to them, but it's just like a gut feeling of like, I love this. I'm not gonna stop thinking about this. This impacted me in some way. and. This this one just wasn't quite there but definitely a high four star like just not enough to be a five for me but i deeply enjoyed it and i think a big part of why i can't can't fully give it a five star is just what i was saying like it, the first half of it took me so long to get into the world so long to really like follow the characters understand who everyone is understand what's happening and that for sure just kind of like impacted things just enough that like with good conscience i can't give it a five star but by the end of it i have to say i was obsessed so fully invested in all of the these characters so fully invested in everything that was happening and just really really excited to see where this goes because it was really laying the groundwork for so many like I think incredible things to come and just so many things that I could see being potentially like incredibly interesting plus so I heard that the story I'm not sure if it's like multi-generational like the series as a whole or just like this one generation story but either way it does encompass a lot of time that's what I've heard is that this whole trilogy is like a lot of years and we're really following like a lot of people over this time this entire clan so I'm really really excited now to see it and I am fully invested in seeing what happens and seeing what happens to like in this world to these characters and everything so I'm done really enjoyed it I do own the second book so I'm definitely going to be diving into that soon probably I might add it to my July TBR and kind of make it one that I want to focus on next month because I know for sure I want to read The Dragon Republic which is book two of the Poppy War I want to like I think especially with a book like this with so many characters I want to read them in fairly like succession so that I'm not forgetting who everyone is and what the world is. So I think I should add those to my July TBR. But yeah, four stars, really enjoyed it. And we're done, we're done friends. I really, really enjoyed this video. I think that this was so fun. And anything to kind of make me read more fantasy is always fantastic. Like it is my favorite genre, but I'm definitely, I feel like I'm kind of going towards a lot of romanticy and romance lately, just because it's easier, it doesn't take as much brain power. And sometimes that's just really what I need. But all 
also I think I need to go back to my roots a bit more. Um, really focused on fantasy and sci-fi a lot, sci-fi a lot more. So I'm happy that I'm doing this type of video. And yeah, this was a very, very big success. Five star and a four star new all-time favorite series. Well, potential new all-time favorite series. We'll see how it goes. And another one I'm super excited to get to. So I'm gonna end off the video here. Thank you for watching, and hopefully I will see you in a video soon. Bye.